So, they're adding new mobs into Minecraft. Well, the mob vote may already be over, but that doesn't mean we can't show them what we are capable of. What if we added a mob to Minecraft so diabolical, so destructive, that the game of Minecraft would have to change forever? I'm talking about something with the stealth abilities of Minecraft's deadliest ocean predator, and something with the offensive capabilities of the terror of the skies of Minecraft. Ladies and gentlemen, today, I give you the new mob in Minecraft. The Squee! Hmm. Uh, on second thought, maybe we go back to the drawing board. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial video, and that first abomination aside, as you can guess, today we are going to be talking about how to make custom mobs in Minecraft. Now this was something that was highly requested after my custom boss video with the pumpkin. If you haven't seen that, then the I card will pop up in the top right, but I'm sure if most of you are on this video, you've already seen how to make a boss. I'm planning on redoing another video series like that where we go step by step on how to make a bit of a simpler boss. That was more of a, a personal project that I wanted to document so people could use it as a tutorial. Um, but today I figured next up in our RPG command block tutorial series, we would work on making custom mobs, changing their health, their attributes, showing what you can actually do to make them stand out um, from other mobs in your game. Before we get started today, I just very briefly wanted to go over the fact that we have started a new video series on the channel called Command Basics. If you haven't already seen the first episode yet, then that video will also pop up in the iCard in the top right hand corner. And this is just a small tutorial series, uh, a bit shorter, to help people that don't know how to use uh, certain command basics in Minecraft. If you want a better understanding of how things like selectors and tags work in Minecraft, then go ahead and check it out. I have a bunch of these videos planned, just kind of going over the syntax in Minecraft command blocks in general. So if you're someone that wants to get into map making and command block usage in general, then I would suggest checking it out. It might just help your learning that much easier, especially what we're doing today in this video. So. Making custom mobs in Minecraft. Let's just cut right to the chase. When you want to make a custom mob, what do you think that mob should be like? You know, a, a bigger version of a certain mob, it should have more health, maybe different attacks, it should look different. Well, luckily you can actually customize a lot of these features in Minecraft just using different commands uh, and NPT data. So, for the purposes of this tutorial, we are going to be experimenting on a slime to show you the different things that you can do. Uh, and then at the end of the video, per usual, I will have an MC stacker tutorial where we will look at a zombie and we will build it from scratch there, showing you all the different armor properties and stuff you can do. But for basics, you know, when you make a RPG, a slime is pretty much one of the basic enemies across all RPGs. So, we will start today with a slime. Just like when we were making villagers in our custom traits tutorial, we're going to need to start with an ideal base mob, or a mob that we create that is ideal for customizing. So if we pop into our command block here, you can see that it is empty, and we are going to start by summoning a slime. So just like before, we are going to use the summon command, and we are going to use the Minecraft slime. Now before I actually get into that, you can see, just like I've talked about before, you can summon any entity in Minecraft. So if you were curious how I made that squid uh, back there with the ink cloud all around him constantly, you can summon, uh, if I show you right here, an area of effect cloud is actually one of the entities in Minecraft. So you can summon them to do different potion effects and things like that. All entities should be included in this list. You can scroll down and maybe get some inspiration uh, if you want to use non-traditional enemies and things like that. Um, there's actually a lot of stuff that you can spawn. Llama spit, uh, experience orbs, item frames, all sorts of crazy stuff. But we will stick with the slime. So uh, usually we summon it at some pretty relative coordinates just on the command block, but we're because we don't want our mob to suffocate inside the command block, we are just going to do uh, the little tilde and put two, so it's behind the command block by uh, two blocks, and then uh, also above the command block just so it doesn't get stuck. Um, and then the uh, Z value is fine where it is. Okay, so just like before, this command itself, if we press done and hit the little button, You'll see, sure enough, it spawns a medium-sized slime right here, right behind the command block, just like that. Simple enough. We, we, uh, we don't need you around. I realize slimes are going to get a little annoying with the, uh, with the amount of splitting they do, but that's okay. So now that we've done that, we want to add some NVT data, just like we did to our villagers in our previous video. So we'll go ahead and add the uh, curly brackets right here to indicate some NVT data. And this is actually very similar to the villager. So if you remember, 
we set a custom name for our villager, uh, and we had a couple of other tags like persistence required that we're going to put on our slime. If you remember, towards the middle of that custom trades video, uh, I talked about some parameters that are pretty universal to all entities, and these are going to be some of them. So we'll start by giving it a custom name. So we will say custom name visible, and just like before, we'll put a colon and put 1B. Now, a reminder, if you haven't seen the custom villager tutorial, that's okay. Uh, I'll just briefly re-go over this. If you put a 1B, it's basically setting a parameter to true. And if you want to put a 0B, it will set it to false. Sometimes different parameters use different amounts of numbers depending on how many options there are. But for Booleans, like is a custom name visible, then you either set 1 for true or 0 for false. Uh, we will put a comma after that, as that is just our first NBT tag that we want. And of course, let's actually give it its custom name. So that is just a custom name uh, parameter there. We will put a colon. Uh, and remember, instead of putting curly brackets, because this is a text uh, sort of list, it, well, it can be, you want to put uh, single quotation marks as your sort of uh, wrappers for this. Next up, a set of square brackets to indicate that it is going to be an array or list of items. And then you're going to want your curly brackets to input your actual values. So when we input a text field, remember that we want to do double quotes and put the word text to indicate that the game is going to read a string. And then we're going to want to put a colon. And then we can input the actual name. Again, because it's a string, we'll need another set of double quotes. And we're going to do something interesting with this slime. We're going to indicate that it is just a basic level one slime by adding sort of a little uh, marker to it. What I mean by that is we are going to have the first sort of uh, part of its name B. I'll put little brackets here. This, these brackets you don't need because we're in a string right now. These will actually show up as brackets. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like at the end. I just think the brackets make it look like an official RPG enemy. Um, and I will type level one. There we go. So if I hit done right now, our slime should spawn with the custom name level one in brackets. I'll just show you what that looks like right here. There you go. Level one. Now you could stop it at this if you wanted to and just let players figure out that, you know, this is obviously a slime. But some people use texture packs, you know, you may use different types of mobs and things like that. So we're going to change it up a little bit more. But that is how you make a custom name on an enemy. Simple as that. Okay, so before we get out of this text field that we have right here, we're also going to give it a specific color. So if I add a comma indicating that we had a text field, and here's the name, this next field we're going to put is color which also needs to be in double quotes, indicating that this is also going to be a string. And I will put a colon right there. Also, if you're unfamiliar with what a string is and why I keep saying it, no, it is not the silky drop that you get from spiders. A string in coding just means it is a, uh, a text field, a, a word, if you will, um, where you have integers being numbers and strings being sort of word values. So when I say something indicates a string, it means we're just putting an actual word in there. For example, color is going to be the string, uh, and the string will be, let's do red. Um, so now if we hit done, just by adding this into the same curly brackets as before, you can see that this slime now spawns with the level one in red, which is pretty cool. Now this can indicate, of course, to your players that this is an actual enemy. You know, red text generally means enemy. Okay, so now we're done with that first text field, but we want to give it a little bit of an addendum, not just leave the level one in red. So what you can actually do is add another text field right after this, as long as it's in your square bracket array. We're going to add another set of curly brackets, and we'll add another text field like that. A set of double quotes because it's a string. Um, and then we'll do another set of double quotes because this string, we're going to call it, we'll do space slime. Now, the reason I put a space right here is because this second text field will take place directly after the first one. So if we just put level one and then put this next text field without the space, slime, you'd notice when I spawned it, there wouldn't be a space between level one and slime. But because it takes place directly after, we'll add that space in so there is actually a space between the words. Also, just because this is a slime uh, and because we can give it a little bit more flavor, we'll add a comma here. And then we will do another set of double quotes, add another color field, colon, and this time we will do green. There we have it. So now if we press done and we summon our slime again, you can see that it actually says level one, then there's a space and slime in the green text. 
This is pretty cool. So even just by doing this, you can differentiate your own custom mobs on your server or your adventure map just by giving them different colors in their names. Now you could do this ad infinitum if you wanted to. You could just have a whole bunch of text strung on all with different colors. In theory, you could even have each individual letter or number be a different color. So you could have mobs with rainbow names and things like that, which is pretty cool. But we might get into rainbow text and other text formatting in a command basics video. Great. So we're almost set up with our base mob here before we start modifying its statistics for being our slime. You can pretty much set up any mob the way we're doing it right now by giving it a custom name. And the next thing that we're going to want to add, and I recommend giving to all of your custom mobs for future use, is a tag. So if I go ahead and add the tags parameter right here, this actually needs a set of square brackets indicating that it will be a list of items. So what are tags? Well, we covered them in our first uh, Minecraft Command Basics video. But just as a brief overview, they allow you to give certain words or tags to any mob or entity you want to allow you to sort or call on them later. So for our purposes, maybe we want to keep track of how many enemies a player kills or how many slimes specifically a player kills. Or, you know, keeping track of different healths and damages of different teams, you can check using tags. I'm just going to teach you how to do this in case you want to do it anywhere on the future of your server. I don't think we'll use it too much in this actual video, but I think it's good practice to when you're making a custom enemy, we can add just very basically the enemy tag. All this is going to do is any enemy spawned like this in this command block with the, you know, command set up like this will have the enemy tag. This isn't going to show up. It's not going to be under their name. It's an invisible value. But you know now, you can always check, you can set up a scoreboard and say, okay, every time a slime with the tag enemy is killed, you know, give the player a coin and things like that. So I think it's good practice to give all of your custom mobs uh, tags so you can call on them and sort them later, just in case you need it. And then finally, another good practice parameter that we're going to add here uh, is making sure that our mob cannot pick up loot. So there is actually a parameter here called can pick, oh, with a capital U, pick up loot. Uh, and this is another Boolean, so we want to set this one to zero. Most mobs have this set to false by default. Uh, I just like to put this in my custom mobs because there's very, very rarely a time that I want an enemy uh, like a zombie um, picking up a piece of armor that one of my players accidentally drops. So if you set this to zero or false, it just means that enemies, no matter what type of mob they are, cannot pick up any loot you drop. This is also specifically very good for piglins as well. And there we have it. That is it for our generic mob uh, as an ideal base. So if we spawn it, you'll see it looks just like it did before, uh, but now it also has the tags and also cannot pick up loot because we set that to zero. Um, so there's our little level one slime. Uh, perfect. So that is how to make an ideal base mob. You can do this with any mob you want. Set their name, uh, give them some tags, and make sure they cannot pick up loot, unless you really want them to. Of course, you can always go through MC Stacker or look up on the Minecraft Wiki other parameters that you may want to turn on or off. But I think for all mobs in general, these are the things that you should turn on. Now, you can also turn on the persistence required parameter as well. I don't know if I recommend it. If you have a smaller map, then maybe putting it on would work. But it does mean that every single mob that you spawn with the persistence required tab will always be loaded. So if you are playing on a bigger server, it might not be the best idea to have a whole bunch of enemy mobs loaded. Especially if you're making these into a spawner, which I can show you how to do at the end of the video, then having a whole bunch of random mobs spawn all the time with persistence required could get a little messy. However, if you are having only a couple of unique mobs or a boss that you want to throw in there, adding that persistence required just means they cannot despawn. So you should add that to any important mobs that you have. Uh, and just to show you how that is done, it's just another parameter here called persistence required. And you can set that to 1B. Okay, so we set up our generic parameters for any mob in particular. We have just started working on the slime. So now let's make this a bit more unique as an actual level 1 slime. So we're going to give it some custom attributes. Now if you've seen any of my boss tutorial videos, this will look a little bit familiar to you. Although I'm sure it is still very confusing. So I already have the command from our previous command block in here. We're just going to go ahead and add to it. So at the end of our parameters here, we're going to also add a comma and add the attributes parameter. Now attributes are pretty interesting and if you haven't seen my boss mob videos before then basically you can add attributes to modify statistics of a mob, their movement speed, their health, their base damage, things like that. 
but sometimes it's a little tricky in the way you do it. It's not as simple as just adding damage up or movement speed down. There's a couple of formulas that go into it sometimes. So because this is a list of attributes, it is a set of square brackets here. And then we're going to want to start with our first one. So we'll add a set of curly brackets. And within the curly brackets, we want to change our slime's health to be a little bit weaker than a normal slime's health, which I think a small slime, I think, has six health. I could be wrong about that. I actually, it might be a little more because it did survive a hit of a diamond sword, so it might be like eight health. But regardless, we are going to change it down to five health, as this is only a level one slime, so you could very, very easily two-shot it with a wooden sword, and pretty much anything else above that is going gonna, is gonna to kill it very quickly. So to do that, to set the health attribute, you have to start with name because it looks for the name of the attribute. Again, this gets a little weird. And for health, it is generic dot max underscore health. Uh, that is the attribute for the max health. <laughs> Not Mac, that would be max. Uh, and then we can add a comma. So this is the attribute that we want to change. And what do we want to change about it? We want to set the base to five. Now, what this is saying is we're looking at the max health attribute, and we're going to set the base of that attribute, or just the default of it, to 5. Which means instead of our baby slime having whatever health it normally would, or a random health depending on the size of the slime, it will spawn with a base of 5 max health. Now, it should be noted, if you're doing this in the opposite direction, and you're spawning, let's say, like a zombie, which normally has, I think, 20 health, and you want it to have more health, you can set the generic max health base to whatever you want, like 40 or 60, However, that will only be the max health. Very often, you will then have to figure out a way to heal your zombie up to that max health, because it should usually only spawn with its default health. But because we're lowering it, it can't spawn with more health than its max, so it will automatically go down to what we need. Okay, so that's the first attribute we want to change. Now, there's not much to show you here other than the fact that we could one-shot the slime easier, so we're just going to keep rolling right ahead, and we're going to add a comma within our square bracket here, and another set of curly brackets to change another attribute. Now, this one, we are going to do name, colon, generic dot attack damage, just like that, and we're going to set the base of the attack damage, oh, without the space, uh, with a capital B, and colon 1. So usually this gets a little tricky depending on the size of slimes. It is a weird mob that we've chosen here. I just thought, you know, slimes in general is a pretty staple for RPGs. If we set the base to 1, a reminder that health in Minecraft, although numeric, works on half heart values. So if we set a 1 base damage here, it's not going to do 1 heart of damage. It will do 1 half heart of damage. So before when we set the base health to 5, it's 5 half hearts, meaning 2.5 hearts. For the actual slime. I don't know why Minecraft works like that, but that's how it does. So if we set the base damage to 1, if you can get hurt by this little baby slime, it will do a half heart of damage to you. So right now we are setting the slime's max health to be a base of 5 half hearts, and the attack damage to be a base of 1 half heart. Now because we're working on slimes, we do have to do a couple more things. We are going to need to add a couple of uh, parameters outside of these attributes right here, so we can just back up and go right after this comma. And we are actually also going to add the health attribute. And this is just setting it as a base number as well. So we will put five to match our max health. Now what this does is even though we set the max health of our slime, it's still going to spawn with the default health of whatever size slime we give it. So not only do we have to set the max health or what it can heal up to, but also its current health. Now, for some reason, its current health is not an attribute. It's actually just a parameter here. So you can add it anywhere in your little parameter section you want. So we have health is set to 5. That'll be 5 half hearts and an F afterwards. And then the other parameter we want to add specifically for our slime is a size up. Now, baby slimes, the smallest size, the one that's been spawning by default, can't actually hurt you because they're too small. So what we want to do is make the next size up. Now this is a very interesting parameter that is only unique to slimes and magma cubes, and it is called size. And you can set this to pretty much be any non-decimal, actually I think you can even do decimal values as long as it's not below zero. So if we set one, for example, uh, it does not need a letter after this, that will spawn a slime with a size of one. Now this doesn't actually mean much unless you have something to base it off of, so Slimes by default can spawn with a size of 0, 1, and 3. That's the small, medium, and large that you're used to seeing in vanilla Minecraft. However, 
You can abuse this and set it to be as large as you want, but be warned, it can crash servers. I think the largest I've ever made one was 1,000, which is, I mean, it's it's like a world-ending sort of event. It also works on magma cubes as well. So now we've set its current health to be five half hearts, which will match with its max health. We've set the size to be one or medium, so we can actually uh, take damage from it. And its base damage should be half a heart. So if we hit done right here, you're not going to be able to see too many differences as I hit the button. You can see there's a little slime. He is medium sized, so you can definitely see that. And if we pop back to survival mode, he'll come back over here. And you can see he now only does half a heart of damage. Look at that. Perfect. So we know that that's true. Now, in theory, assuming that we our punches do half a heart each, he should take one, two, three, four, and five to kill. There you go. Now, it should also be noted that slimes do split, uh, and they will actually carry their attributes from their parents. It's not too much of an issue when you're working with, you know, small slimes, because the baby slimes don't actually pose much of a threat, so they can die pretty easily. However, if you are working with rather large slimes, uh, their size generally gets divided in thirds, I think it is. So if you're working with, like, a slime of size 12, the next one will be a size 4, and then it will go down to a size 1 or 0, depending on, you know, what the slime is. If you have a whole bunch of other attributes on your slime, like very strong damage or health, uh, they can inherit those as well. So just be careful when working with slimes and sizes. You're going to want to do a lot of testing to figure out which size is best for you. But either way, there we go. You can see that it was doing half a heart of damage to me. It had 5 health. It had its custom name and everything like that. So... With this command right here, we've now basically created a custom slime with its own name, uh, its own health values, its own damage values. So this is pretty good. Now, this is great and all, and it is enough to just make these custom enemies that will attack you with their different damages and different healths. But of course, we do want to take it a step further, because what is a custom enemy without custom drops? But unfortunately, we'll have to save that until the next video, as I realize these are getting a bit long. So. Remember, if this first part of the tutorial helped you out in any way, shape, or form, leaving a like would be greatly appreciated. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can see when the next part of this tutorial comes out where we'll start talking about custom loot drops and things like that. And then probably a third video is when we'll get to the MC stacker uh, and making spawners and stuff like that. So if you want to make sure these appear in your box, subscribe and hit that little notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this stuff helps your command block escapades. Uh, and until next time, see ya!